falling off. All right, I'm back. Now, what I have here in this bottle is a Lobelia tincture. Now, I also set it in a powder. That's what I had. I would prefer to do it in the cut herbs, like I said, and this is the reason. I can shake and stir powdered herbs pretty much as easily as I can do cut herbs. What I can't do is press out the powdered herbs quite as well. I won't get quite as much liquid out of these. More liquid will be wasted. And when we're talking tinctures, we're talking drops are precious. For a child, this is Lobelia tincture, and for a child, one drop, two drops can be a therapeutic dose. Okay, so every little drop counts. So that's the bummer about using the dry herbs. However, I'm still gonna have a lot of the tincture. It's gonna be very potent. I'm gonna have it around when I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this out. And uh, if I had a tincture press, actually I do own one, but I never use it anymore. But if I were using that, I could probably get those last few drops out of it and get it squeezed down to where it was completely dry. Now all I've done, this is a cloth. It's been washed a few times, but never with soap. And uh, it's just an old white t-shirt, okay, which works best for what we're about to do. And it's just sitting in a bowl. The bowl, it isn't, I'm not going to store it in this bowl, but it's going to be here for just a minute. And I'm going to take this tincture and pour it right in there, right in there. And you saw the clump of the powder sort of come out because it settles every day, okay. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to squeeze it out. And I'm going to ask my daughter Amelia to hold this camera and make sure that it's pointed at me and seeing this, okay? So, here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to just take the corners of this cloth up. Ma, Dad, I can't see either of you. Okay, I well, can see your hands, but... Point it at this. Okay, can you see it there? Yeah. So I've just got the corners up, and I'm just going to start squeezing. And look at that tincture just milking right out of there. Okay, this is why I use t-shirt cloth because it stretches just a little bit. If you don't have something that stretches, it doesn't work real well because, especially with a powder, the powder will clog up the pores. But if it stretches a little bit, the powder will kind of clump up and then it'll push the water, the liquid by as you squeeze, okay? And so I'm gonna squeeze this and milk it. Now, this is Lobelia tincture. It's not gonna hurt to get it on my hands, but if I were doing something like a cayenne tincture or a habanero tincture, I maybe would want to um, put on gloves so that I didn't get this all over my hands. It doesn't bother me too much, but a friend of mine was helping me one day and we pressed out a cayenne and habanero tincture and her hands burned and uh, had welts on them for three days. So that maybe isn't the best idea if you... Uh, if you're doing it that way. Now, here's the uh, finished product. If you want to look in there, that's the finished product of Lobelia tincture. Of course, I'll bottle it in glass. I'm just going to come over and rinse off my hands. I don't want any soap in my tinctures. So, I'll wash my hands up good, and I'm just going to rinse them thereafter until I'm completely done with the process, okay? I'm going to set you back up here where you can see me. So, let me just finish and conclude. That's all there is to it. Bottle it in uh, amber dropper bottles if you have them, or if you don't, just put them in something like this. Label it really good so you're not confused about what it is, but uh, just bottle it up, make sure you know what it is, and you know, use it when you need it. It's as simple as that. Making tinctures is so easy. The toughest part is remembering that the tincture you set needs to be shook every day for 14 days. And at the end of those 14 days, then you press it out. Just stay on cue with that. You'll do fine. You're going to turn out great tinctures, high quality tinctures, okay? I recommend you use organic herbs. We don't want a bunch of chemicals in our tinctures, okay? And, um, you know, the instructions might vary. Like if you're getting instructions off of my website, which is calschool.com, cal with a K, um, then uh, you're going to find I instruct you to use different things for different tinctures. I may tell you to use apple cider vinegar for one, apple cider vinegar and alcohol together for one, uh, alcohol and water 50-50 for one, or straight Everclear for something. It's just going to vary depending on the situation. Thank you so much for joining me for how to make a tincture. I hope you've enjoyed it, found it easy. I hope you can make tinctures in your home. The cool thing about tinctures is you're going to store the medicine of that plant in a bottle, on your shelf for when you need it, and it's going to last pretty much indefinitely. Depending on the tincture, some tinctures start to wind down in value after a year or two, but for the most part, tinctures are good for four to five years before they really start to lose substantial value. 
And uh, so this is a great thing to have around for an emergency. All right? Thank you so much. And have a wonderful, healthy day making tinctures. Please come join me at calschool.com. That's K-A-L-S-S-C-H-O-O-L.com.